No marquee today. I feel kind of naked without it though. There's just simply too many movies coming out at the same time as we get into award season. And it's just hard to review a video for each single movie that's coming out. So I decided to change up my format just a little bit and make a giant video about six different films that I've watched recently. Let me know what have been your favorite movies so far of 2021. Are any of these six films in your top 10 movies of the year? I would love to hear your thoughts and comments down below and thank you so much for joining me. So let's jump into it. The first film I'm talking about is The Matrix Resurrections. A follow up to The Matrix Revolutions, we find Neo back in The Matrix somehow and, and Trinity. Now there are some great things about this movie. The fight scenes are awesome, of course, the action. I love the sound effects that they have in the movie. It's just like it was in the original trilogy, Matrix. The fight choreography feels the same. There's some really cool action pieces and some really fun and interesting character dynamics. There's some new characters, some new actors, and that's basically where, to me, this film stops. There were so many questions and no answers. And it was very much like that in the first Matrix movie when it came out, but it was done and executed very intelligently, very thought out, where the Matrix Resurrections just feels like it's sort of slapped together and just sort of taped together, and they didn't really explore anything interesting, worthwhile, or intriguing enough to keep me invested for you know the over two hour film. Ultimately, I felt this film was unnecessary. It didn't really add that much to our story. It stopped at the action and that's just not enough for me to continue to wanna get involved into the Matrix world again. One of this year's weakest sequels or continuation of a film franchise that we've had. If it had a great story, the campiness and cheesiness was toned down just a little bit more, this might have scored a little bit higher. Unfortunately, they did not resurrect my excitement. So ultimately, I have to go ahead and give The Matrix Resurrections a C. The next film on my list is The Power of the Dog, written and directed by Jane Campion, who has come back after, I think, like 15 years. The way that they marketed it on Netflix, it was like, this is gonna be the best movie that's ever made. And it wasn't. And we follow this family in the middle of the Montana wilderness on a ranch. There are some really interesting twists and turns Jane Campion does in this film. And the script is very intelligent and it's penned well with some great dialogue and character interactions. Beautiful cinematography in this film. Besides those things, this movie just didn't do much for me. It really dragged. It was way too long of a movie. Not enough happens on screen. Everything is sort of subtext and hidden under certain veils and not really releasing things to the audience on purpose. Because it was doing that, it was trying to be so smart, it sacrificed the overall appeal of the film. The story itself isn't that engaging. The characters are laid back and drawn and sort of ethereal in some ways. It's just not my cuppa. There are some great performances, Chris and Dunst, Cody Smith McPhee, and especially Benedict Cumberbatch, and some wonderful moments in this film, each individually for each character. But ultimately, the sum of its parts don't really add up to anything great. So I liked this film, I wasn't in love with it. There are some things that are tricky in the movie, and if you're not paying close enough attention, you might miss it. The performances, the cinematography are great, but it's not enough to make this movie a top contender. I'm gonna go ahead and give James Campion's film, The Power of a Dog, a B minus. Now let's pivot into the late 80s, early 90s of Jonathan Larson's life with the film Tick, Tick, Boom. Hi, welcome. I'm Jonathan Larson. This movie stars Andrew Garfield in a career-defining performance, a wonderful performance by him, as Jonathan Larson, the creator of the hit mega Broadway musical Rent. Lin-Manuel Miranda of Hamilton was coming in and directing. I was intrigued just with that alone. Turning 30 and not doing anything with your life and wanting to make something big and have an impact on the world, a theme that I connect to, especially at my age, as a musical theater performer, student, connects to this movie in a lot of different ways. So there's a lot for me to grasp onto that might not be there for other people. Most people who haven't had an experience in musical theater or haven't performed it or haven't had some sort of creative process, they're not gonna connect to this film. I thought the best thing about this movie was the performances, specifically Andrew Garfield. He is having one hell of a year with this, No Way Home. Also, The Eyes of Tammy Faye. He's really having almost like a 
Andrew Garfield Renaissance. All right, all right, all right. He gets nominated for an Academy Award for his role as Jonathan Larson in Tick, Tick, Boom. I don't know what the show is. Why do we play with fire? I'm not in love with this soundtrack. I'm not in love with this musical choices necessarily. Not every number is uh, great. Get into Jonathan Larson's head to show us how he writes and where he gets inspiration from. And so some of the really imaginary moments that is in this film, I thought were super creative. It's a good movie, but it's not exceptional. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Tick Tick Boom a B plus. And the next film on my list is Don't Look Up. Written and directed by Adam McKay, who is a really interesting, provocative filmmaker from films like Vice, The Big Short, Anchorman, Talladega Nights, Step Brothers. I mean, this guy has a wacky, strange resume, but they all have some sort of humor in it. This film is an allegory for global climate change, global warming, COVID-19 pandemic, politics in the United States in the 21st century, the political and, and cultural climate, and all of these things have kind of been smushed together as a satirical dark comedy film. People who believe in science and don't believe in science. Fantastic cast like Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Meryl Streep, Jonah Hill, Mark Rylance, Ron Perlman, Timothy Chalamet, and a whole bunch of other people. While there's some hilarious moments in this movie, the movie really ends with the writing. The rest of it was okay. The characters are really hard to connect to because there's so many moving parts in this movie. Yes, I had fun with it, cool moments in it. The script definitely outweighs the execution of this film. The Big Short is still Adam McKay's best film. He's a little too much of the hammer on the face, and beating us over with a message over and over and over again. But again, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Put that bag over your head. They don't do that, the CIA does, but I made them do it. You know, I had a feeling. It's a good feeling, because that is what I did, and it was very funny and cool. I'm gonna go ahead and give Don't Look Up a B plus. And let's get into the fifth film I'm talking about today, West Side Story. Directed by Steven Spielberg, this is obviously a remake of the classic musical Best Picture winner based on Romeo and Juliet, updated into the 1950s ganglands in New York. And there's some ballet dancing, there's some snapping, some really amazing musical numbers, some beautifully shot scenes, some of the best choreography I've seen in a movie musical ever, some wonderful performances, especially from Ariana DeBose or DeBose. Do you wanna start World War Three? <laughs> but she plays Anita, definitely will get nominated for Best Supporting Actress, she is fantastic in this movie. And the rest of the cast I thought was great. Everyone could sing and dance and move, they had charisma. But one of the best things that this movie had was Steven Spielberg. To get Steven Spielberg to bring in his eye, his expertise, and his spin on this story. And actually, I think this movie is better than the original, which is blasphemous to some people. But actually, if you look at the way he shot things, the way he did things over the original, this one is much more creative, much more innovative. It looks a thousand times more beautiful and colorful and wide shots and these great choreographed numbers. Him and Tony Kushner, the writer, did a great job of making this movie feel like it fits in 21st century. Now, the one thing about this film that I couldn't quite give this movie an A or an A plus is that I'm not a big fan of West Side Story. I know. What's the matter with you? It all comes back to what this movie is based off of. I'm just not a big Romeo and Juliet fan. I hate the story. I can't stand the logic of it. I don't want to rewatch this story. It's depressing. It's sad. But Steven Spielberg, tip my hat to him and Tony Kushner. I'm going to go ahead and give West Side Story an A-. minus. My last film on this list for today is Belfast. Written and directed by Kenneth Branagh. Most people know him as Professor Lockhart from Harry Potter. <laughs> this is to me... Kenneth's best work he's ever done. He's ever written, ever directed. I loved Belfast. This is a really well-crafted film. I hate black and white movies unless it has a purpose, like in the movie Memento, but there's a reason for that. This is one movie where I didn't mind watching a film in black and white. Oh my goodness, this movie is beautifully shot and it would totally change the look and feel of this movie if it was shot in color because there are specific scenes where there is color and it's shown very purposefully 
because of the character that we're following, the young boy who the story, the protagonist is based around. So we get his imagination, his love of life, his innocence, and that is being contrasted with these adults in this real world situation in the 1960s of Belfast, where there was civil war. His home is being torn apart from the outside and also from the inside with his parents and the struggle that they're going through at this time. This is a semi-autobiographical film about Kenneth's life growing up in Belfast. So there's a really emotional, personal connection to this film and you can feel it in every single frame. Another thing I love were the performances. I think even the boy, he is incredible in this movie. The way that they show the boy listening to adult conversations and the way that they stage it, like two adults are having a conversation here in the kitchen and then They'll have the kid standing off to the side, listening in on it. And just the way that they show how this story is revealed through the eyes of the kid, I thought was incredible and powerful storytelling. They did a great job with the look, the sound of this movie, the soundtrack is gorgeous. The songs that are in this and the one scene where the dad is performing on the stage and dancing with the mom. I mean, it was just beautiful. I teared up a couple of different times in this movie. And even though there is the backdrop of the war happening at this time, it is a feel good film. It is a film about family and home and innocence and growing up. How our world is shaped by the environment that we're in or that we're trying to get out of. But you can still sit back, relax, enjoy the film, laugh, cry, and fall in love with this family as they struggle through this turbulent time. This is a movie that has the potential to win Best Picture. The critics love this film. Audiences love this movie. It is a movie that I would come back to and watch again. And it did crack my top 10 films of 2021. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Belfast an A. <laughs> What did you guys think of all of these films? I would love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. How would you change it up? And while you're down there, click like and subscribe to my channel for more content. You can definitely come back and check out some of the other films I've done recently, like No Way Home, Licorice Pizza, and Dune. Thank you for joining me today on Mr. T's Film Preach. I hope you guys had a great time. Stay focused, stay awesome, and as always, let's get taught.